Okay, so let me start uh, and uh, continue on the, the idea of uh, part on energy loss. I put the energy loss because in quotation marks because you can also gain energy, okay? So let's start by looking at what's happening in the high energy sort of high virtuality part of the, the shower, okay? So there, uh, I first have to talk a little bit about kinematics and, and introduce some, some, some uh, um, uh, formalisms, so to speak, over here. So when we do this high virtuality portion of the, 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 the evolution, uh, typically we don't use Cartesian coordinates uh, in these calculations. We like to use light cone coordinates. And light cone coordinates are essentially keeping the uh, X and the Y component of your momentum the same as they were before, but they like to combine the energy and the, the Z component of the momentum uh, in, in these two sort of uh, orthogonal uh, uh, combinations, okay? So instead of your, your, your Q squared your being, being the virtuality, being energy squared minus two momentum squared, it's this combination over here that is the, the, the most common. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, 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 we're using light cone coordinates instead, okay? Uh, also, to simplify the calculation, you can always rotate that you, in such a way that your uh, original incoming parton, right, is purely going along the z direction, okay? In such a way that the transverse components of the momentum, you can, you can, you can rotate them away, okay? So you just have to worry about uh, energy and, 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 and z components of your momentum, okay? Uh, now, uh, okay, so this, I will label the incoming uh, guy here as, 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 as q. Whereas the two momenta that are going to be outgoing are I like so. So if, if I assign, say, a momentum fraction y that uh, uh, the, 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 the minus component of, of the p is going to take, right? So therefore, by energy momentum conservation, uh, the, the, the glue on here has to have one minus y. In such a way, when I add these back two guys up together, I get back uh, what I had here. Uh, also, I started with zero uh, uh, transverse uh, component of your momentum. So therefore, there you also have that to balance that. And uh, basically, you can, you can, um, you can figure out what, what, what the, the last component here is by looking at, assuming that the partons are massless and by using energy momentum conservation. Okay. So th these are essentially the, the kinematics of, of, of the split. Okay. So now the question is, um, once we have the, 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 once we understand the kinematics, what is essentially the probability of, of having that split? And uh, basically for that, uh, you, can, um, you can calculate what the, the splitting function is. So this expression over here is essentially telling you what is the probability of having the split. And the problem with this probability is that it's not actually well-defined uh, well -defined quantity that, uh, everywhere. Okay? And in particular, it has a singularity uh, if you look at the splitting function y equals one. Okay. However, um, the, uh, there's also a virtual correction that, that, that you can add to this diagram, which I give over here. And that also has a divergence at, uh, that is present also to add y equals one. And it, as it turns out, of course, virtual corrections add or wear minus sign in such a way that the combination of these two is essentially giving you what is the probability of a split and that is actually now finite uh, once you combine them together. So I'm gonna use this sort of uh, plus definition here to tell you that um, um, I've combined these, um, uh, these, two con uh, these two contributions, okay? This is known as the plus distribution, but I'm not gonna go too much into detail of what, what that is. Okay, so if you can have uh, uh, one split, of course, you can also have multiple splits. And um, if you are um, in the regime where the, the, the virtuality, okay, so I did, forgot to mention very quickly, but this momentum squared, L perp squared between these two guys, okay, can be related to the virtuality, okay, by, but through this momentum fraction. So either having this transverse momentum squared or virtuality squared, they're, they're equivalent. So uh, if, you are, if you are in the case where you have these ordered splittings, where you start from very highly virtual guy, okay, which is, which is also emitted at large angles, right? And then subsequent splitting gets lower virtuality and so on and so forth, right? So you would have this, this shower of co continuously decreasing virtualities and continuously decreasing angles, okay? Then the probability of the, the, uh, having n of these splits, okay, is given over here. 
Now it turns out because you have the ordering uh, in, 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 these, in, in these various showers going from very high virtuality to lower virtuality, which is also an ordering, uh, implies an ordering in angle. Uh, if you actually end up, uh, if you sit down and do the, the Feynman diagram calculations of what that is, you realize that the, the subsequent radiations over here interfere very little with each other, okay? And basically because of this, uh, because of this fact, you can essentially, uh, uh, that allows you to resum all of these uh, various radiations that are possible in this uh, uh, ordered uh, uh, scheme here. Okay, so uh, that that those that, that resummation can be done, and this is sort of the the the, the gory expression that comes off of this, where I've uh, there were you have this complicated exponential, an exponential of, of an operator, as it turns out, the exponential of a convolution operator. So really, this should be interpreted as a, a Fourier series over here. Okay, and ultimately what this is giving you is this is giving you uh, a, an evolution prescription or how your fragmentation function essentially ends up, ends up changing as a function of energy scale, okay? So with this operator definition, although it's mathematically uh, uh, accurate, it's a little bit difficult to use in everyday life. So uh, what is more useful is to, is to actually use the integral differential form of this and, uh, the, and the way to obtain that is essentially to take a derivative of these uh, um, fragmentation functions, sorry, uh, and uh, and divided as a function as a function of of log q squared. Okay, but that this is essentially dig, uh, telling you, okay, as a function of of energy, how does the fragmentation function vary? Okay, and this is essentially known as the Deglap evolution. Okay. Uh, the one quick note that I would like to uh, just highlight for people if they want to read more about uh, uh, how this comes about, uh, there's actually a very nice derivation in this, in this reference that I'm uh, showing up here. Um, but uh, typically in, 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 in books on, uh, on perturbative QCD, the, the, the splitting functions uh, typically don't have this plus distribution ha happening in there, they're sort of assumed. And what they would have instead as an argument is, um, uh, is essentially uh, to label what kind of split do you have, okay? So the, for instance, over here, this is saying, okay, I have a split from a quark to another quark, and that this other quark actually has a momentum fraction of y, okay? Or you can have the another splitting function that, that is related to this one, where a quark splits to a gluon, and now gluon takes this, 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 this y momentum fraction, okay? Of course, these two, uh, these two guys are related because in a split, because of energy momentum conservation, as we saw, if, if one takes y, the other one has to take one minus y. So those are not, these are two not, these two, part, these two splitting functions are not uh, independent. Okay, so, that, so up until now, everything that I've explained is what is essentially happening in uh, the vacuum. Now the problem comes about when you have to deal with that in the medium. And uh, the complication of course, as I already mentioned, uh, comes from the fact that in the medium, uh, instead of just having this, this split, okay, this is essentially assuming that uh, on an event by event sort of, sort of basis, um, you, you didn't have any scatterings. In the medium, you actually can have scatterings and you can get scatter either on the, on the, on the side of the, of the parent, uh, uh, quark or gluon for that matter. I'm just showing the quark here for simplicity. So you can scatter off of the parent or you can also scatter off of e either one of the, uh, the daughters, okay? So, uh, and, and this time around, okay, there is actually interference terms that are happening uh, between these various diagrams, okay? So when you, when you sit down and you actually carefully calculate what that thing is, that gives you this interference term that is this four sine squared uh, piece, okay? The other thing that the scattering, of course, is going to do is this is, is going to impart momentum or transverse momentum in here onto the, the, the parent quark or the daughters. And um, this average transverse momentum square that you would gain by, by scattering off of the medium per unit length is essentially encoded in here in, inside of this, this Q hat, right? So if you, if you ever hear about, uh, you know, Q hats in any kind of uh, calculations, this is essentially what they, were, what they come from, okay? So Q hat is really is the biggest, the biggest contribution to, uh, to uh, uh, um, the medium uh, uh, modifications to the to the splitting. Okay, so uh, now that we uh, now that we take, we have seen essentially uh, how does the, the splitting function get modified in the medium, 
Uh, now I want to spend a, a few more minutes talking about how do we essentially implement that in, inside of a Monte Carlo algorithm. So the way that this is done is essentially that Pythia ends up, uh, in, in the case of Jetscape, ends up producing you the, the very highly uh, uh, energetic and highly virtual partons. And Pythia, the, at least when, when it gives you the partons, the, these partons are, sent, uh, are, are assumed to be on shelf. And uh, then when, when matter picks them up, it assigns an off shellness to them by using, using the pseudocorn form factor. Uh, and that is essentially given over here, uh, which uses the splitting function that I've just shown you a slide ago. Okay. So the idea is that you re generate a random number. Okay. And you compare that random number to uh, a value of Q squared. And one, once they match up, you can assign a particular Q squared to the, uh, the, 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 the parent part on. And the way that this is done essentially in, in matter is to uh, not leave the energy alone and modify the three momentum. Okay. So shrink the three momentum to be able to assign the virtuality. Then of course you can use the splitting function to figure out what the momentum fraction between the, the two daughter partons here is. Okay. Again, you can sample that as well. And then you can also assign through the Sudakov again what the, uh, uh, what the virtuality of the, of the splits of the daughter partons are. Okay. Uh, the other thing that is, of course, also possible, as I already mentioned, is the fact that uh, the, these partons, both the, the parent and the daughters, can actually scatter into the medium. And because of these scatterings, you can have little wiggles uh, that are either on top of that that modify slightly the energy or the, or, or the momentum. Uh, and th these scatterings essentially assume that, uh, uh, that this, uh, th this, this virtuality is unchanged. Okay. Uh, how does this do to scattering happen? I will explain that matrix element later on uh, because it's part of, uh, uh, it's the same matrix element that it is essentially going to be used inside of uh, either uh, Martini or LBT. Okay. So I will stop here for the time being and take any questions if there are any. Uh, so Can far, I? it looks like the questions on Slack have been uh, responded okay. to. Okay, very good. <laughs>